Welcome back to the lab, folks. Today we're going to build up uh, our MOSFET module from PCBWay here. Uh, we did have a, a brief look at the uh, circuit boards the other day because it, it just happened to come in on the day I was doing a, a mailbag video. But um, let's have a look at these boards here. So they, they did put in the keep out that I wanted. I've uh, made mistakes before in getting those keypads put in. You, see, you have to be sure that you choose the right layer. So this will allow the MOSFET to have a, 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 a better thermal contact uh, with the heatsink I've built into it. So I've built into the heatsink here. It's on both sides of the PCB. Now, um, for these heatsinks here that, you know, that are, are copper pour on it, PCB, it's around about one square inch is, is uh, the point at which you get diminishing returns, very much diminishing, and about two square inches you're done. Uh, going to four or five or six square inches doesn't give you any more um, cooling. But what does is if you use both sides. So if you, if you look carefully here, you see all these little vias, like there's literally a hundred vias in here or more, um, connecting the top to the bottom here. So these two pores then can act um, as two separate heat sinks and give you quite a bit of, of extra cooling. So I think if I did my math right, we have about 25 degrees C per watt of cooling here. And uh, other than that, it's just a very, very simple little board um, that uh, kind of connects the MOSFET with the uh, optical isolator here. And we have some bias adjustments in order to get the thing set up correctly. now. Uh, I did specify a particular optical isolator that I do have, um, but it, I wanted this to work with multiple different MOSFETs, multiple different optical isolators, so that's why I put in these variable resistors here. That way I can build it up according to what I want for the particular application I have. So there it is. Let's get some of these, or one of them anyway, built up, and uh, we'll play around with it. But these are, again, they're really nice boards. I like the red, I like the red. It's a nice color. So I have all the components here and I'm going to put it together. Now, another option here is, is to, if there's not enough heat sinking for your application here, you can always put one of these on it as well um, or something like this. I mean, I happen to have these particular ones. I've even cut these in half before because you can use them that way. Uh, but uh, we'll see, we'll see how warm this gets. Well, one of the things we're going to try to control with it is this huge big motor. This is an 18 volt motor from a jigsaw from Ryobi. Okay, but this, uh, this motor here kind of draws around about three amps, no load. So it should be a pretty good test for this. So I'll be controlling the motor with pulse width modulation. There's other kinds of modulation too. There's, there's a pulse position modulation. I don't know if you've ever seen that before. So anyway, the first thing to do would be get one built up. And like I said, I'm going to build it up without this heat sink on it. First, I can always add that later uh, if the thing tends to get too hot. So let me get all these parts and everything over the solder bench, put this sucker together, and then uh, we'll be back. Okay, folks. Now, we've got to set this up. So first thing we have to do is we've got to set the current through the diode. Now, according to the spec sheet, you can see that the uh, maximum transfer current transfer ratio happens at about 15 milliamps. So because we're going to be driving this with five volts, so five volts divided by 0 0.015 equals, so we need about 333 ohms. So let's, uh, let's set up that first pot. That's this pot here. We've got to set that up for 333 ohms. That's one side of it here, and the other side over here. So here we go, we're at 580. Now you can see why I put these little trim pots in here rather than just trying to calculate something out. Because if I wanted to use the same module with a 3.3 volt or a 10 volt logic level, I'd have to adjust this. And if I was to use a different opto-isolator or opto-coupler that had a different transfer function, 
then I would have to adjust it to make it work right. And the next adjustment we have to make is, is this one here, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. We're going to have to put it under load and adjust that one there for the proper pulse width. So we're going to set this up using a pulse width modulation. Okay, we're just going to attach the power on here. I'm going to feed it 18 volts because this, this is an 18 volt motor here. So I want to set this up for proper operation of 18 volts. I've got the uh, function generator coming in here and I've got it set for five volts peak to peak with a two and a half volt offset, positive offset and a 50% duty cycle. So we can get the oscilloscope up. So let's have a look at the signal we're bringing in. All right, so this is the signal side. So that's just that. We got exactly 50% duty cycle. And that should be appearing here on the dial with a much reduced voltage. Let's see if I can get that to trigger. So we basically got the 1.4 volts across the red LED in there. And uh, let's see what we're getting out here. We put the power onto it and see what we're getting at the MOSFET. It looks like our, well, we should actually move over here, shouldn't we? And we've got a different ground here. It looks like you're at 48. 0.8%. Let's see if we can improve upon that. It's not going to be easy to hold this here. This is where you need three hands. Adjust this until we can get pretty close to 50%. We don't want to overdrive the transistor. So let's try let's try this 49.67% and let's measure that resistance across the collector of the transistor there. <clears throat> one lead there and one lead here. So it's 750 ohms. So that's 18 divided by 750 equals. So, okay, we're around about uh, 25 milliamps, so that's good. That should be fine. That transistor can handle continuously up to about 50 milliamps. So we'll leave it at that. That's pretty, that's close enough for us. And uh, let's get the load hooked up. We have our signal coming in from our signal generator. Now this, this is actually, it inverts the signal. So I have to send it like a 95% pulse width in order to get a 5% pulse width out. So that's how I have it set up, 95% pulse width. And I should be getting like a 5% here. And we are 4.65%. And we can see the motor is just barely turning here. So um, let's, let's knock this up. Let's uh, go up to 10%. Okay. I wonder if you guys can see this or even hear it. But uh, let's uh, get it up at 20%. Now we're passing about uh, 1.5 amps at this point in time. That's not, it's not even getting warm, it's at room temperature. And we're up to 50% here. We're passing about 3.1, 3.2 amps. Still not getting warm. So that's basically full blast there. See what our signal looks like. All right, essentially 99%. Ooh, that's a strong motor. That wear holes in my hand. All right, so that's uh, okay. That's one application of it. Um, another would just be a, a plain ordinary old switch. You could just switch on and off a load with it, just the same way as this is switching on and off right now at, at one kilohertz. So you, you could switch on a light bulb, a heater, a big relay, any anything of that nature can be then fired by something that's essentially only providing 15 milliamps of current. The waveform that we have here at this gate seems to be pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm not upset with that for the, 
for what we're doing here. You can see down there and on the scope there, you got kind of like when it turns off, it's kind of a relaxed edge on it. And that's probably where most of the inefficiency is coming in, but let's have a look at what voltage that's at. That begins at around about 2.5 volts, which is well below the threshold of this MOSFET. So this MOSFET is turned off at that point. So, and it's turning on very, very quickly. You can see from the rising edge over here, it's well past that uh, four and a half volts, which is the threshold voltage, long before it starts to round off. So it, it's turning on hard, it's turning off hard. but. You could use, if you wanted it a little bit better, you could follow up that opto isolator with a, a MOSFET driver. But unless you're going to drive this at much, much higher frequencies, I wouldn't bother with that at all. And obviously one kilohertz is fine for this purpose here. Now I did, I did mention earlier in the video that there's a, a different kind of modulation, probably maybe that you haven't thought about before, but I, I found it very useful in the past. So let me kind of set up for that. So I'm going to use my function generator uh, with a, a fixed pulse width mode and then I'm just running that through a, a standard TTL inverter to get the, uh, the signal I need to drive this. So if you look up at the scope there you'll see that I, I have a 100 microsecond pulse coming through and that's that's just enough to produce a little vibration in the motor but not enough to move it. Now what you want to do with this is you want to adjust that pulse width just so the thing moves on each pulse. Right now I've got the frequency set at 10 Hertz. So we're going to increase that to 200. Okay, so now we just got movement on it. So I'm going to, I'm going to bring it up a little bit more, maybe to 250 microseconds. So we get good positive movement with every single pulse. So you can see that there. Now, as we increase the frequency, 20 Hertz, 30 Hertz, 40 hertz, and if you look at the waveform on the oscilloscope, you'll begin to see what it looks like. Go up to 200 hertz, 300 hertz, 400, 500, 600, 700. We're at around about 50% duty cycle here at 2.1 kilohertz. We're drawing about 2.6 amps. And that's how that, what I call pulse position modulation works. I've used this in the past before to produce a sound effect on a movie. It's a very, very long explanation. It'll be difficult to get into, but if you, if you ever see the movie Poseidon Adventure, so yeah, long story, not worth listening to. But anyway, that's our look at real world control using this little isolated MOSFET module here. And I thank you guys for coming out to have a watch at this and to listen to me ramble on about it. And I'd like to thank PCB Way for their assistance in this. Without them, these little projects wouldn't be possible. And yeah, I, I would imagine you could, uh, you pump a lot more current through this, even just like this. Like it doesn't even get warm. Like it's barely, not even body temperature after passing four or five amps. So with something like this on it, you could probably take it up to around about 10 amps or so. And a beefier heat sink if you want to go even further. But yeah, it's a great little module. Um, it, you know, don't have any fears about designing your own. Um, you can go through some of the things that I did to, to make it very versatile. You do use it with different MOSFETs, with different optoisocouplers, with different voltages going into it, different voltages coming out of it. And uh, it's, a, it's a dandy little circuit. You could make it a little bit more sophisticated, put some protection into it and stuff like that. I didn't in this case. I just made it as simple as possible. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.